Hey guys, it's John. I am back for some five minute action playing an opponent I played recently. Akaba in the house. Akaba is certainly in the house tonight. I'm going to play e3 against this b5 system. I'm recording in a different format than usual. I actually hope this will lead to uh, more high def videos, actually. So. I'm trying to make this 720p. Most of my videos have been uh, 480 in the past. I'm going to play a3 just to keep the queen side more or less locked down because I may just very well castle on that side of the board. Now a plan that white has in this line is to go f4 and then relocate the knight to f3, believe it or not. You go knight g1 to f3. It's been a while since I played this variation for white. I do remember it's pretty tough to win in this line as white, at least like OTB, because if you look at Black's structure, he's totally solid. Um, I should probably close it up after this move. Mm, do I want to leave it open? Leave the door open? Maybe. Huh. Now let's close it. Let's keep it simple. Yeah, he's already going lockdown mode. I'm going to continue maneuvering. Eventually, maybe I can crash through with the sacrifice somewhere in the center. <clears throat> yeah, I'll just jump into e5 for now. It's a castle. But yeah, he's arranged all his pawns on light squares. That's thematic since I have a light square bishop and he doesn't. So, probably a good play by Akaba in the house. Do, do, do. Okay, do I play f3 or do I not? Because he might take on e5 soon. Kind of think f3 is not great for me. It's not like I have a whole lot of other plans to choose from, though. Sort of like bishop e2, but my pawn is hanging. I can't do that yet. You know what? Let's just go here. I'm curious to see if he'll take my knight. Because I don't think he will for a while. If at all. He's more or less just going to sit still from the looks of it. Wow. Oh. So he doesn't even want to take my knight. He's not thinking about it whatsoever. Okay, now he's got to be a little bit careful. Actually, I wonder if I'm doing well now because. Okay, never mind. I thought I had a little something. Just take aim at this knight again. If he ever plays knight g7, I think I can sack on g6 favorably. And then I take back and his bishop is getting hit. But the question now will be how, to, how do I improve my position? It looks nice. Everything looks nice. But if he just sits there and does nothing, what can I really do? Yeah, he can literally just do something like that. Just play h3. The fact that we're playing moves like that means we're both running low on ideas somewhat. What if I like play f3 and then gradually like bring my bishop over? See, I could play f3, bishop e1, bishop h4, but that entails blocking out my light square bishop almost entirely. I don't think that's a good idea. What else could I try to do? I could try to like somehow triple. Okay, he might go for g5 if I'm not careful. 
Am I torn up about that if he goes for g5? I don't think so. Okay, I just don't, I don't have time to think about it. So if he wants to go g5, he'll go g5. I'd be okay with that. I'll take and then you know, I'll play f4. Probably my bishop will come back to e1. The hardest thing in chess is to do nothing. Remember that, guys. Bet he'll just bring his knight back. I really want to sack on c6 at some point. Really want to do it. <laughs> There's so much tension. We've only exchanged one piece in 29 moves. Okay, I think I'm going to play f3. Because I don't see my light square bishop ever doing anything with this business. I'm going to go f3 and put the bishop on h4. I'm going to see where that leads me. Hopefully somewhere promising. His pieces are all gummed up. Like, he can't play knight d7 because I can take on c6. So when I play bishop h4, with some ideas of bishop g5, maybe? I like the look of this. Okay, time is good. Let's do that move now. Okay, I think this is really good for me. Take. Like, instantly take. And then he's going to have to play knight d7. Yeah, I'm going to get this move in. I'll take c5. I'll take here. I'll take here. Now i got to make sure not to get him give too much counterplay. At least I hope. Let's go back. Let's go back with that guy. I got your knight. Got your knight, Akaba. Hmm. Let's go here. Start attacking that pawn. Attack this pawn. Go after that. Threaten mate. Check. Hmm. This is a really sharp game. I mean, really sharp game. I'm going to go over here so he can't sack or anything. Uh, let's go here. Better do something safe like that. Hmm. All right, hold the phone. Gotta be careful. So many traps to avoid. Hmm, 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 hmm. Boy, this is a tricky position. I just got to get behind that. Check. And hopefully threaten some back rank business. Yeah, he's threatening some nastiness. Really? Check. Check. Draw. Hmm. Time warning. Uh, Check. All right. Yeah, it was a draw. I just didn't know how to get out of that situation. I think I lose if I don't do something. Weird. I don't have any checks with my queen at the end. 
my gosh, that was a complicated game. Especially at the end. I mean, I felt I should have win with my I should win with my time advantage, but how do I do anything at the end? Whew. Okay, let's take a quick look at this one. I have a feeling this this game would take a while to analyze. I mean, it was very closed in the middle game. Let's go to the position where I ended up playing, um, what was it, bishop h4? Like I played f3, and then the bishop came to h4. Let's check that out around about here. Okay, so this, this idea of getting the bishop in g5 was good, according to the engine. Take, take, knight here. Problem is the position gets messy after knight takes c5. Like, yeah, it should be objectively good for white, but it's messy. Okay, I can play bishop takes b5, huh? Didn't consider that. I just thought about taking the knight. He did a really good job of keeping the position complicated at every turn. I mean, this guy seems like a pretty experienced player. I don't know who this player is from Austria, but you can tell he's no he's no pushover. Because at various points, like, you know, here after bishop e2, I think that was a good move. I found that move. Um, you know, he played d4, just causing mayhem. If he does something normal, like take on f4, I think he's even much worse. He just did a good job of, and he was behind on the clock too, he did a good job of keeping it complicated enough that I never saw a clear win. Computer says I'm plus four, but it did not feel like a plus four position during the game. Because, yeah, I've got these um, protected pass pawns, but they're right in front of my king. My king safety is not great. Try to create problems for him with his own check. king. This check. He just ignored it. King g8. Maybe g7 wasn't such a bright idea. Oh, rook f2. Aha. Uh -huh. Engine says rook f2. Try to deflect his queen. That's interesting. And then, hmm, if here I assume rook f3, yes. Aha, because, and just so I can illustrate this variation, if he takes on f2, then I have mate check. in a few moves. Check. And check mate. Check mate. So I play g7 just kind of instinctively in that position, but it seems to be a mistake. Yeah, rook f2 is winning on the spot. Well, he has to play queen g5, but then this endgame should be, <laughs> emphasis on should be, fairly easily winning for white. I would have loved this compared to the game when the queens were on board and my king was in as much danger as his king was, it seemed. Huh. So g6, h6, check. check. Well, I'll be very interested to see the end. I went queen b6 just to attack his rook on d8 and also fortify b4. Maybe I don't have to be worried about rook takes b4 yet. Because if he does that, I take, he takes with the queen. I can always block with my rook on b2. So maybe I shouldn't be overly concerned about that move. Um, so queen b6. I just couldn't figure out what to do here. Yeah, the engine's pointing out like some easy-ish wins. Queen takes h6. I didn't see that. I, I was so focused on trying to get my queen down to the back rank and trying to force him to take this pawn so I could swing one of my rooks over and give him a check and start harassing his king. I just didn't really... Ooh, rook g1. <laughs> that was a really bad move, apparently. I thought for like 30 seconds and then made a horrible move. But look at the time differential at this point. I just felt like I should be winning, but like... I couldn't find a safe move to make. I didn't see a check that was good. Taking this would be a disaster. Take, take, and rookie two. Check. I'm getting mated. Good night. So, that's, it's not easy. It's not a walk in the park, this one. <laughs> Computer's like cold-blooded. Just queen takes h6. I guess because after check, there's not really any follow-ups, are there? Yeah. Huh. Well, Check. after rook g1, 
in this rookie two move, I guess I was lucky to survive. Okay, queen e3 is winning for him, apparently. Check. As played, yeah, draw is a fair result, I think. Check. This game was pretty even for most of it. Hmm, hmm, okay. Well, I'm going to skip the opening discussion and the middle game discussion, because like I said, it was just a, a really closed position. This is an interesting line, though. It's kind of fun to play for both sides, really. I just have experience on it from the white side. But, hmm. Maybe a game to take a closer look at at some point, maybe in a couple days. I sometimes do that. I go back and look at my, my games after a couple days, even these Blitz games. All right. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. And please leave me any feedback in the comments as usual. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.